You know, as I started watching Burn the Witch, already I started to feel an incredible sense of adventure. Literally, I told myself, wow, this is it. Peak fiction has reached animated form. And obviously, to no surprise, all of this went far beyond my expectations. Originally, we know that Burn the Witch as a whole has been delivered as a movie. For fans overseas, distribution has arrived in the form of episodes through Crunchyroll. And of course, I will leave a link to Burn the Witch's anime in the description. If you have not seen the episodes yet, they are incredible. Definitely go down to Crunchyroll and check those out. At this point, everyone should already be aware that Burn the Witch is an expansion of Bleach's universe, diving into a whole other dimension that focuses on witches and dragons. This concept is very unique. It really pulled me in. And as soon as it did, like I didn't really ever want to leave. As I started watching, everything already had me hands down impressed. Reverse London is absolutely beautiful. I felt truly immersed. Now, before the first part truly moves along, Nini is spitting facts at the beginning. She obviously strikes me as a person who doesn't take crap from anyone at all. Easily, you can tell right away that she is a strong, independent woman. Fame isn't easy, and dealing with all of those reporters certainly isn't something on her to-do list. I love that scene where she quickly runs away into the dark alley, nowhere else to go, and then suddenly pulls out her magical coin and phone. Immediately after that, the ground opening up with a huge flash of light, truly astounding, escaping one reality and jumping into the one she actually appreciates. Nini is a respectable character. She has more than one job, and seeing that really hits different. You have a girl who has a lot on her plate. She has no time to deal with nosy reporters, she has places to go and dragons to keep under control, which, if I had to guess, is something she obviously enjoys doing a whole lot more. In Soul Society, Soul Reapers do have an incredible salary. With Burn the Witch, it's basically the same, but just with a few interesting twists. This whole Western branch, Soul Society, has its own way of doing things, and I'm assuming the other branches that exist out there have their own interesting gimmicks as well. Now, there are really cool similarities. For instance, and this one is obvious, we have spellcasting that is highly similar to that of Bleach's well-known Keto techniques, where you say a few awesome lines before casting the technique you're using, or rather in this case, we can just say that it is a spell since they are witches. Noel uses one at the beginning. Wait, hold up. Let's talk about Noel. Well, first of all, I just have to say that Noelle's best girl. Just want to put that out there. No, it's not only because of her amazing, um, I, I have to say, Nini stands say that she isn't interesting at all, but, you know, I mean, Noelle, I personally think that Noelle is a fun and unique character in her own right. Don't be hating on best girl. She has personality, not much of it. She isn't just a pretty face, make no mistake. We will talk about this more. We will. We will get back to Noelle and Nini. Let's talk about how beautiful this world is is that has been brought to life with gorgeous animation we have received by Studio Colorido. I don't really know much about London, but what I can say is that the architecture is really breathtaking to say the least, and honestly, I would love to visit London one day. It really has me thinking about taking a nice vacation one day in the future. See the sights, you know, would definitely check out the iconic clock tower known as Big Ben. Front London is cool, but of course, Reverse London sounds a whole lot more badass. To be fair here, the lore of this whole new universe that we are exploring here, the lore is still jumbled around in my head, and I do fully intend to slowly understand everything there is to know about Front and Reverse London properly, because it is a tad bit confusing. This place known as Reverse London has a few similarities, such as the Wingbind, uh, the organization, in charge of keeping all dragons from harming the citizens of Front London, because of course it has, as it has been stated, those who dwell within Front London cannot see these dangerous supernatural entities that are responsible for the crazy amount of deaths that have taken place throughout history. The percentage mentioned is 72%. Um, That's a really high percentage, which is why they formed Wing Bind to protect the innocent that are unable to see these things like Soul Reapers protect human beings and keep balance. And also like Soul Society, there are many rules which I find is also pretty cool, but at the same time, they are quite strict. And that is no surprise. Safety precautions in Bleach have always been quite strict. If certain rules are broken, there are severe punishments. Down in the eastern part, 
as we know to be our soul society that we know and love from Bleach, the existence of soul reapers and hollows is to be kept a secret from the world of the living. And of course, you got sharing your powers with a human being. That is also a taboo. And that's just another example I have. There are many things I wish to know about Reverse London, which is what makes everything about this place all the more interesting. We don't know everything yet. At least I don't think so, because Kubo will release more on this in the future. It has been confirmed, and I'm truly excited to see what else he has in store in terms of the lore surrounding this magical realm. And I do have a random thought here. If Reverse London is a counterpart to Front London, does that apply to people as well? Honestly, I don't think it's possible because things would be a bit weird that way. Not gonna lie, I just figured that the buildings, you know, are exactly the same with Front and Reverse London. Maybe Residence could also be a possibility as well, but, you know, my gut is just telling me that's a serious no. Otherwise, it would have been mentioned, and just, that just doesn't make sense. A lot is unique with Reverse London, though. I mean, Eastern Soul Society doesn't have a mirror of itself in the real world like Reverse does. I'm seriously wondering how these other branches work. We do have the existence of other branches, I believe, because we have an Eastern Soul Society and a Western branch, that leaves two other branches, and I'm seriously wondering what the other two are based on. Kubo really is full of surprises, and he's expanding his universe. If he continues like this, Bleach will rise even higher. To this day, I'm still trying to make sense of everything. The dragons seem to come in all shapes, sizes, and appearances, and of course, each of their capabilities are different too. Kind of like Pokemon, in a sense. It certainly goes without saying that the soundtrack is definitely something that pleases your ears, and yes, I know that sounds weird, but I'm, I'm a sucker for orchestra. I'm just putting that out there. I love the soundtrack, especially with that scene where Balgo shows up with Osushi. Um, the whole show... <laughs> the whole show me your patties thing. Balgo's perverted side obviously rubbed off on his pet dragon. A dragon that looks like an innocent dog. Again, shapes, size, appearances... All the, all the characters are lovable. Balgo is a big favorite of mine. He is just this carefree, innocent, clueless guy. And I feel like, I feel like that also applies to Billy Banks Jr. as well. Which, by the way, this man be looking like Luigi from Super Mario Bros. <laughs> Anyways, he's a great guy too. The voice actors that were chosen are top tier. They really fit and portrayed each of the characters extremely well, in my opinion. And I truly mean that. Wouldn't have it any other way. It was done perfectly. In my opinion, much of what has been done here with this as a whole has been a golden experience in animated form. As a Bleach fan, it truly feels good to be eating this way. It is refreshing and has revitalized Bleach fans. And if newcomers who haven't seen Bleach end up watching this first, I mean, that's quite alright. This is a separate story, and it's a brand new experience. There is a lot of build-up, and every scene here is sweeter than honey. There are just so many things to talk about in terms of Reverse London. I'm in awe of this work, and I'm still looking around and trying to learn more, because it is all so very intriguing and confusing at the same time, but I'm still trying to make sense of it. Dragons, for heaven's sake. Dragons are fun, and I have enjoyed this deeply. What I'm wondering is... What happens when witches in this realm die? Do they go to soul society, like the, the one we know and love? What happens to their souls exactly? I mean, witches are already a part of a different soul society, but it's their own, and technically, it is different from the one we know. They aren't really responsible for balancing souls like the soul reapers. What they're doing, they're just protecting people from dragons. They're not soul reapers, so death for them is something I would like to know a bit more about. Like, surely, I'm assuming you guys have some interesting questions as well. The concept is similar to Bleach in a lot of ways, but this one has its own world, its own rhythm. I love Noelle and Nini. They are cute together. I consider them to be like kindred spirits. They get along quite well and seem to have this special bond. I sense this very special, unbreakable amount of trust between them. They have each other's backs, no doubt about that. And even though Nini has some seniority over Noelle, for most of it, it feels as if Nini treats Noelle as an equal. Colorido has done a bang-up job with the animation 
every frame, every angle, the, the raw detail is drop dead gorgeous. I mean, from what I could see, I'm certain that they went all out with this. The animation style feels unique, mixed in with Kubo's genius designs. Thinking about Kubo, he really knows what he is doing. And I heard that he had some involvement with this animated version in terms of guidance. To believe that this all started off just as a one shot back in 2018 for Shonen's 50th anniversary really hits me hard. It hits me different. Now look where we are. Look at all of this that look at everything that's going on. Burn the Witch is already making serious bank rising through the ranks of Shonen at an incredible speed. Kubo's storytelling is still as strong as it ever was. And we are still left with so much curiosity here. There are still so many things that we want answered. And again, I'm so glad that the manga will continue, meaning that obviously we will receive a second movie in the future and distribution through Crunchyroll will obviously continue as well. Ultimately, at the end of this first episode, we have a round table full of badasses. The wing bind, top of horns, the highest chain of command, I believe, basically a captain's meeting like the ones that go down in Bleach. All of those characters are really cool. They have really cool designs. Um, I love how their names were displayed with awesome fonts. Uh, I thought that was pretty cool. It was a nice touch. They do seem to be quick with decision making. Already rushing to the point where they want Balgo eliminated since he is a dragon clad, which is known to be quite troublesome for them um, and everyone else. In my opinion, I feel like they could handle this a bit more peacefully. Um, without, you know, having to eliminate someone on the spot. It just goes to show you how crazy everything is with these rules. Like if a human comes into contact with a dragon, you're royally done for. They will execute you. They will actually execute you. Now, Bruno, Bruno Bang Knife is definitely a big one. We are going to talk about him in the next review. Make no mistake about that. Um, and uh, that's pretty much it for this review. I mean, that's that's it. Let, let me know how you feel about Tight Kubo's Burn the Witch in the comments below. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.